Hi. Now in this tutorial what I want to do is introduce you to this concept of work done by a force. It's equal to force times distance moved by the point of application of the force in the direction of the force. Let me explain. Suppose we had a horizontal plane and two points A and B a distance of three meters apart and we had a particle and on this particle we applied a force say to the right of five newtons and let's suppose that this particle now moves to the right at a constant speed there'll be no acceleration so we just mark an acceleration arrow here and say 0 meters per second per second so this particle then is going to move to the right now this 5 Newton force acting on it is said to be doing work and the question is how much work does the 5 Newton force do in moving from A to B well in order to answer that question we need to look at the definition. We can see that the force is 5 newtons. It acts in the direction from A to B. Therefore the work done must be equal to the force of 5 newtons times the distance it moved, 3 meters. Clearly coming to 15. But what are the units as well? we've got force which is measured in newtons and distance which is measured in meters so that's 15 newton meters now you don't often see these units written one newton meter is defined as being equivalent to one joule or j for short 15 j 15 joules so this would be then the work done by this 5 Newton force in moving from A to B. But the 5 Newton force isn't the only force that acts on this particle. I mean, you've got the weight for instance. Let's just put that in. That would act downwards. Let's say W Newtons. You've got a contact force acting upwards. Let's say that is R newtons. What about the work done by the force W newtons, the weight? Well, as the particle moved from A to B, the force W newtons, which acts downwards, didn't move. It didn't move in a downwards direction as we move from left to right. So, in other words, it did no work because that distance covered would have been zero. And the same applies to the normal contact force here, R Newtons. As we move from left to right, the force of R Newtons didn't move in the upwards direction, so the distance travelled by R in the direction of the force was zero. So it too did no work as we move from A to B. And this is a common concept that you'll come against. That is, if you've got forces that are perpendicular to the direction of motion, they do no work. And you'll see this in another example that I'm going to do in this tutorial later. OK, well, let's move on to another example anyway. Now, suppose we put the particle on a rough plane there'll be friction. Friction will act in the opposite direction to motion. So it's going to act to the left. We'll just say that's F newtons. It's still going to move at a constant speed to the right. Now a typical question that you're going to get for something like this will be find the work done against friction in moving from A to B. Now in order to do this we need to find out what that frictional force is first of all. So we're going to need to consider resolving say in the direction of motion to the right. So 
we'll have 5 newtons to the right. Obviously the R and W do not come into this equation because they're perpendicular to the direction we're resolving. But then you've got minus F. And this is the resultant force acting on the particle to the right and because it's going at a constant speed then we must have no overall resultant force so it's going to equal zero or you could use mass times acceleration and acceleration is zero so you're still going to get zero anyway and if you rearrange this for f you see that f equals five five newtons so when it comes to working out the work done against friction what we do is we take the frictional force and in the direction A to B you can see that its direction is parallel to that direction that we're moving in so it will move its point of application in the direction of A to B so therefore the work done against friction as we say let's just put it down here work done against friction is equal to the force of 5 then times 3. 5 times 3 then giving us the 15 and the units for work will be joules. All right. It's worth noting that if we had said what is the work done by the 5 Newton force in going from A to B it still would be 5 times 3 15 joules. But the purpose of this particular example was just to get used to this phrase here, the work done against friction. You might even see in some questions it says find the work done in overcoming friction. Same kind of idea. Okay? Now in my next example what I want to show you is how we calculate work done when we have force inclined at an angle to the direction that we're moving in. So here's this example. Now suppose then we had our 5 Newton force not acting to the right this time but acting say at an angle of 10 degrees to the horizontal. We'll just mark that in here. We'll just put a dotted line down through there and uh, write that in as 10 degrees. So how do we work out then the work done by the 5 Newton force in moving the particle from A to B. Well to do questions like this what we need to do is split the 5 Newton force up into two components. Now that would be one in the direction along here of motion and one vertically upwards. Just squeeze that in there. Okay. Now the only force that is going to have any effect in moving it from A to B is this horizontal one here which if we were to resolve would be 5 cos 10 degrees and that would be measured in Newtons. The one up here doesn't have any effect as far as work goes because it's perpendicular to the direction of motion. That component just for the record though is 5 sine 10 degrees. So when it comes to answering this kind of question what we need to do is find out what that resultant force is then to the right and then we can work out what the work done is. So the work done would equal the force 5 times cosine of 10 degrees multiplied by the distance it moves, its point of application. Well that was for me to be and it would be 3. And if you work that out on your calculator you'll find that you'll get 14.772 and so on which will come to when rounded say 14.8 joules to 3 significant figures 3SF. Okay so I hope that's given you an idea. Now I've just summarized what we've done the three examples on one sheet so you might like to review them again. And so here they are. Well I hope that gives you some idea now of how to handle work done by forces 
when we've got motion in the horizontal sense. Now what I'm going to be looking at in my next tutorial is work done when we look at vertical motion and then we're going to move on to work done when you've got motion up or down say up an inclined plane. So I hope they'll be of use to you and that brings us now then to the end of this particular tutorial.